My name is Dr Lindsay Peer. I'm mother of dyslexic children. Um, I was a mainstream teacher in school. Um, I'm a dyslexia specialist and a psychologist. Um, I was the education director for the British Dyslexia Association for 10 years and was appointed CBE for my work with dyslexia and mainstream education in 2002. Um, I'm now one of the directors of Peer Gordon Associates, where we do assessments for children, um, lecture internationally, um, and I write. In dyslexia, it seems to me that one of the most commonly missed areas is the emotional side. Um, teachers and parents are very good at noticing problems with reading, with writing, with spelling, and even with maths. But there's very often a, a growing element of lack of motivation, low self-esteem and upset which um, develops as the child goes through school and the pressures become greater and greater. The problems seem to manifest themselves um, through a range of ways. Either um, young people become very quiet, very internal, they sit at the back of the class, avoid eye contact. Um, the ones where somebody asks them to read, they'll get up and they'll suddenly disappear out to the toilet. They'll take all sorts of evasive tactics. Um, or you get the children who really mess around um, and become the class clowns. The children who will do anything um, to get out of um, learning or being very obviously uh, struggling with uh, learning difficulties. These are the children who want to be accepted by their friends, want to be accepted by their peer group, um, and therefore by being funny or by being um, very obvious, um, they get their street cred, but without looking as though they fail. And from there onwards, um, as they get older, the anxiety levels often grow, the frustration often grows, and you sometimes get um, high levels of anger, which appear as well. Um, which can be very frustrating for teachers, for parents and for the young person themselves. The problem is that you tend not to grow out of it. Um, if you are dyslexic um, or you are dyspraxic, you will be so for life. Um, what you need to do, of course, is to learn the strategies and to have ways around your difficulties. Um, but it's very frustrating for a young person to look around um, and to see everybody else appearing to do much better than they are. Um, and you feel as though um, life is, is really treating you quite badly. And if nobody actually tells you that there is a reason for your difficulties, you will label yourself. Um, so you might call yourself dumb, thick and stupid or, or something like that. Um, the difficulties, um, as you're very young um, and you can get away with it by being hugged by your teacher or by a friend, um, are not so easy when you're in secondary school and all teachers are making huge demands on you. Um, and when you begin to fail um, and you begin to feel very badly about yourself, you become very vulnerable. Um, you can become very on edge and it, it makes you feel as though your life is really very tough. So you get very tired, you go into school, Monday morning tends to be easier than Friday afternoon. Um, but life is, is, is really very challenging indeed. Um, if, for example, as an adult, you weren't happy with your job, you might um, get another job. You might apply for something else. If you're a child at school, you're stuck, and the chances of you changing school or changing class are actually very minimal. Um, and these feelings go with you throughout life, and I know many dyslexic adults who feel very vulnerable, who feel on edge, um, who feel a certain sensitivity, and always feel that they're not quite good enough or certainly not as good as everybody else, and that's tough. It seems to me that we should be identifying young people as early as possible. Um, I like to see children, even preschool, being identified for any early difficulties that they've got, whether it's in language, whether it's memory, whether it's hand skills, and to give them a lot of extra help before they start school, before they start with reading and writing, so that we develop what I call the prerequisites for learning. Once they're in school, um, I see every advantage to giving a child a label so that they know that there is a reason for it, that there's nothing wrong with their brain, they're not ill, they're not stupid, um, but that they need 
to learn the way they learn best. Um, and that may not necessarily be the way the teacher teaches. So it's about adapting the teaching to that. Um, parents need to be very supportive. Very often parents themselves have been through difficulties and can identify with the child. And when you've got a school and a parent um, who are happily talking to each other and who share their thoughts um, and who bring the child in, in that triangular situation of, of support, very often kids will do very much better. But it does mean um, a lot of understanding, a lot of talking, a lot of openness and all teachers being very sympathetic and very empathetic for what's happening. Not saying to somebody, you know, you can't do this, it's okay, but saying to somebody, I'm going to teach you so that you can do it, so that you can make progress. You know, I'm not a great believer in medication unless there's no other option. Um, medication tends to be given for children who are hyperactive. Um, and I have noted in the literature a condition that I have called hyperreactivity. That is, the child who misbehaves, who appears to be hyperactive, and for whom medication in many cases is not going to work. Um, hyperactive children who respond well to medication um, <clears throat> will do much better in school, um, but the medication itself, in my view, should only be given after there's a period of um, educational input and all the other things that we talked about before. For a child who is hyperreactive, uh, the child simply needs to be put in the right environment, which may or may not be a specialist dyslexia school, um, but certainly be, needs to be in a place where they are understood, where they are supported, and where they're given every possible help um, so that they make progress. Understanding of dyslexia has changed over the course of years. Primary schools as a whole tend to be teaching in a way which is far more suitable now for dyslexic children than ever before. And many universities have also taken on the view of the Disability Discrimination Act and have been very helpful towards dyslexic students. The main area, in my view, where there is still a major problem is that of secondary schools. Um, many kids go in and there's a huge dip when they get to year seven and year eight where their self-esteem absolutely plummets, where in many cases teachers have not been trained through no fault of their own, but have not been trained, the resources are not in place, um, and the children are facing demands from morning to night from a range of teachers, um, all with different requirements. Um, in my view, there is a need for a major training um, uh, process to take place throughout secondary schools so that the children really can um, fulfill their potential.